Good morning, folks. Good morning. My name is Doug McCausland, he, him. I am the chair of St. Andrew's Council. And on behalf of the council and the congregation, I would like to welcome the members of the North Bay United Churches to our service today. I would like to thank those involved for this major undertaking. Some would say it would be easier to herd cats than it would be to organize a service like this. As I've said before, I call this my home of worship. Not a house of worship, because the home is much warmer than a house. I'm proud to be part of this home of worship, and for the next hour, you will see why. Thank you. Thank you, Doug, for those words of welcome. For those who may not know me, I'm the Reverend Lillian Roberts. I'm uh, my status, I think, as retired clergy, but you'll find me drifting around doing different things across the United Church of Canada. Currently, I'm doing some work for the Office of Vocation, and I was here doing supply work with St. Andrews for about 18 months. So when they took on the service for today, they asked if I would come and I honestly did not say herd cats. <laughs> if I would come and help them plan and put the service together. You will notice that during the service today, many of us are referring to our pronouns. And Kim will say later on during the words of awareness why that's important for the community here at St. Andrews. So my pronouns are she and her. I want to say a word about the format of the service this morning. When the planning team met early in January, I think, when I was here doing worship, we talked about what was important for St. Andrews in terms of inviting people to be part of the worship experience this morning. And two things came. First of all, that it's important to hear the voices of our congregations, that we wanted to know something about each other. And secondly, that St. Andrews wanted to share with you a bit of the flavor of their usual worship style and how it is that they have that experience of being home Sunday mornings. So we hope that those two things will happen for you this morning, that in the guest reflectors we'll hear and learn a little bit about the life of our congregations here in North Bay, and that through the style of music and the style of worship and the many voices you will hear participating, you'll have a sense of the style and format of worship that is part of this home place. St. Andrews is pleased to invite you to stay for lunch following the service, and that's downstairs in the gym. And for those that may not be really familiar with the building, you have two options in terms of getting there. The first is to go out these doors and down two flights of stairs, 16 steps. If 16 steps is not comfortable for you, exit through the back of the sanctuary and there will be someone operating the elevator that will bring you down to the lower level and then it's down at the end of the hall. So two options for how you get there. We would invite you to actually maybe seek out someone that you haven't had a chance to talk to for a while. Uh, not just sit together in your little congregational groupings, but actually venture out and uh, explore others that you may not be as familiar with. You are also invited, when you go downstairs, to immediately go into the service line because we're going to sing grace after the benediction this morning. So as soon as you're downstairs, you're able to go ahead and share lunch together. I don't see any children. Am I missing anyone? Well, for anyone else who may get bored during the service, <laughs> there are activity sheets <laughs> in the uh, chapel on the table with your own set of markers and crayons, and you are welcome at any time to go and retrieve a packet and bring it back to your pew and uh, color along while we continue in worship. I want to thank all of those who were a part of organizing the service this morning for all of 
voices that have come to share in the choir, for those who will be sharing in reflections and readings, it really is important that we are aware of the leadership that we have in this wonderful gift of our congregations in North Bay. And I'm going to give a quick little invite this afternoon at 2 o'clock. The report singers are holding an eclectic Celtic concert down the street at Trinity, and you are more than welcome to come and join us. At this point, I would invite Janie to come and share traditional territory. Good morning. My name is Janie Clayton, and while I offer this land acknowledgement uh, on behalf of the Canadian Shield Right Relations Team, Emmanuel United Church is my home congregation. We've also been asked to name the pronouns that we use. Mine are she and her. With gratitude and appreciation, we gather on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabeg people on lands occupied by the people of Nipissing and Dokis First Nations. We respect and acknowledge the treaty rights and the ownership of the unceded lands of all Indigenous people. When we think of an outdoor place we treasure, a river, a lake, a waterfall, a forest, our waterfront, a garden, any sacred place with good memories of family, friends, and activities where our love and learning are forever intertwined, we are full of incredible gratitude for the use of this land. So with this in mind, we can begin to appreciate the importance of the Indigenous land and the water connection, the intertwining of their spiritual beliefs, their traditional knowledge, generational learning, and overall well-being. This gratitude, we feel, is one single act of reconciliation we can build on as treaty people. As we light the Christ candle during this season of Easter, we are reminded that the light of new life abounds, that the light of life dances across creation, across communities, across our lives and our hearts. And as we gather in community, we remember that we are invited to share that light, that love, with one another, with others outside of our doors, and with the world and God's created world. May the light share its warmth and its glow as we gather to worship. Kim will lead us into worship with a drumming song. My name is Kimberly Robinson Nellis. My pronouns are she and her. And my spirit name, Nagigani Pimataiji Wajibabadem Dijnakash Makwa Dodem, Antoine First Nation, Algonquin. This Algonquin song is sung four times through, one for each of the directions. And it is sung like a lullaby. The song means that the water is the lifeblood of our mother, the earth. Water is the lifeblood in our bodies.
granddaughters, the water hears you. The water has memory. Ni bi wabo endayen, aki misqui. Ni bi wabo, heya 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 he, heya 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 ho. Water is the lifeblood of Mother Earth. Water is the lifeblood of our own body. To continue to pass on the knowledge that needs to be given to other generations, you are the keepers of the water. To make the change in the life condition that we are in, that great-grandchildren will stand up to the truth of what life is about and live it in such an honourable way, the way our ancestors came, came to the earth. Each day when the sun rises, no matter how bad the day before may have been, there is a new chance for your hopes and dreams. Miigwech for the water prayers, for protecting the water, and the water blessings. Kim. I invite you now to join in the call to worship. Like the first community of believers, we gather together in worship. We join our voices in praise and prayer, lifting our common song of faith. Gathered as one, we are the church, God's beloved community. Our voices unite together in worship as we offer ourselves to God. And what more traditional voice than to sing together, holy, holy, holy.
magnificent choristers. Let us raise our voices together in prayer, and there is a sung response, a familiar one, Lord of the Dance, that follows our prayer. In God's presence, we know that yearning within our spirit to be in conversation and connect with God. And so we come offering these words. Holy companion, you call us to be companions to one another. We hear your voice in the voices of one another, sharing the wondrous ways in which you move among us. Our hearts are opened and stretched by your love, showing us the gift of welcoming all, even as you welcome us. Gather us now into community of your meaning through the Christ whose followers we would be. will share with us our morning song. Good morning. morning. My name is uh, Sydney Willette. I'm from Carmichael. And I will be reading verses from Psalm 104. The Psalms are wonderful reminders God's praise is given voice by creation. As we think about the voices that call us to be God's community, may we open to the voices that resound in the wonder of creation, as well as in the diversity of the human family. Listen to the voices depicted by these verses in Psalm 104. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. You, this, we're moving to verse 10. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. The wild asses quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use to bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine, and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests. The stork has its home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the conies. Those are rabbits. You have made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's time for setting. You make darkness and it is night. When all the animals of the forest come creeping out, The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. People go out to their work and to their labor until the evening. Our Lord, how manifold 
are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Amen. We'll now have the uh, choir anthem, Each Blade of Grass. During the season of Easter, we set aside reading stories from the Old Testament, and instead, we hear stories from the Book of Acts about the early church. Today's reading from the second chapter of Acts happens just following Pentecost, and is hardly a story at all. It's really just a description of the early church. So I need us to remember that when we hear the words of Scripture, there is often an oral story that is happening in the background. So I want you to imagine that maybe you're in the temple in Jerusalem, and you're asking questions. You're muttering about, who are these new believers? And what are they doing? What kind of community are they? Or Perhaps you're a widow, elderly, on your own, and you go to the temple, as been your tradition, to worship every day, and you're asking the question, who are these amazing people that they have reached out to me and cared for me in my need? Or maybe you're a middle-aged man, 
And you have shown the commitment to this new community by selling all of those things that you really didn't need anyway. And seeing that that money was used for the community and for those in need. Imagine that you come together not just to have coffee, but you come together because you have a vision of what it means to be God's community. And now, hear the story, the description of the community we are called to be. The community committed, really devoted themselves to learning everything that the apostles were teaching and to coming together in fellowship, in breaking bread, and in prayer. Everyone had a sense of awe because of the signs and wonders that the apostles were working amongst all of them. There was this intense sense of togetherness. They even held all of their possessions in common trust. And their possessions and goods that did not benefit the community, well, they sold those. And the money was used to help those in need. They were unified in their worship as they gathered day after day in the temple. And in their homes, they came together to break bread and share a meal, and they were known for their glad and generous hearts. All of the believers, they praised God, and they knew the goodwill of the people of the city of Jerusalem. And so it was that day by day, God added to their number all of those who were experiencing the Lord's salvation. This is the wisdom on which we build our community. Thanks be to God. And we sing together of that vision out of More Voices, number one, Let Us Build a House.
Good morning. My name is Kim Della Rosebell. My pronouns are she and they. I am from St. Andrews, which is an affirming congregation. I am also on our council, our worship committee, and part of our inclusivity committee. I'm here to talk about pronouns. And the simplest and easy way to start is, hi, my pronouns are, and then say what they are, and then ask, what about you? This simple act of letting the other person know that you accept their identity and you want to make sure you're getting things right. And yes, it may be awkward at first, but it quickly can become routine if we do it regularly. And yes, you may make a mistake. Simply apologize and move on. This simple action can be a big impact because pronouns are personal, pronouns are important, and pronouns are not a preference. Thank you. So in a few moments, we're going to hear voices from your congregations to share something about their sense of community and the voices that have called you into that community. We all love our congregations, right? No matter where it is, we love the way that we worship in our place. We love our people that we care about, but we also love this united church of ours, this wider sense of community in which we are invited to participate. And you'll be sick of hearing these words in the next five years, but the place that calls us to a deeper sense of our own spirituality, the place that gives us encouragement to actually be bold disciples, and the place that gives us the willingness to risk being daring in giving voice to justice for our world. We come together because somewhere a voice in some way whispered an invitation in our ear or in our heart that invited us to be part of church. And that's the question that we've asked our reflectors to share with us this morning. Who are the voices in your community that invite you to a deeper sense of being community and being God's community? Each of the speakers will end their reflection with a phrase that's in the bulletin that you can see that says, I give thanks for the voices that make us community. And we are going to respond, and there actually will be a slide up there to prompt us that says, we give thanks for the voices that call us into God's community. So listen to these stories. They are our stories the stories of how we witness in this place called North Bay. The voice of how we are called together by grace through this thing we call the United Church. The ways in which we are blessed by the gifts that so many share. So Jim and Trainer are going to lead us off this morning. My name is Trainer, and I use he, them, they, them pronouns. And my name is Jim, and I use he, him pronouns. We are members of the Inclusivity Committee, and I've come to know and respect Jim, but you know, back then in the late 80s, when I came out as a lesbian in Kirkland Lake, we did not know each other at all. I wish I did, I could have come over for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did our path start? Well, not knowing one day that I'd be standing here, crazy idea, I learned about the LGB phone line, but I did not know it was housed in St. Andrews. Yes, Gay Nipissing asked St. Andrews to help set up a phone line for the LGBT community in one of the rooms above our stage. And I'm sure many people here have never been in those rooms. They're very pleasant, small rooms. 
half well, a person's size. I don't know about pleasant. Small, <laughs> yes. I spent over two years in the original foam room to complete my master's thesis in 2006, and I had to stand up to turn around. <laughs> Yes, well, few in the congregation knew about the phone line, <clears throat> although it had been arranged uh, through the authority of our church executive. Well, Jim, you know, they should know now that they gave the LGB community a real gift, even to me living in Kirkland Lake. So I was alone and I left a message and a guy named Chuck called me and welcomed me home. Well, that's why we helped with the phone line. And then they wanted to meet in person, and so we put them on the stage behind the curtain. Behind the curtain, <laughs> like the iron curtain, like they were in the closet. They were in the closet and behind, behind the, curtain. the curtain. Well, luckily, they were out and proud, and when I came to North Bay to an LGB Halloween dance, I met Chuck, Chuck and Ralph. I remember Chuck was dressed like a cowboy, complete with a saddle slung over his shoulder. That convinced me that I too needed to stand up and be out and proud. We need to be visible, to be the light for those who come behind us. I agree. St. Andrews has worked to stand proud of the light that we are providing along with many other elements of the United Church of Canada. In 1982, the national group Affirm, Gays and Lesbians in the United Church, was forced was formed to support full inclusion in the National Church for every person. And then in 1988, a landmark decision, General Council 32 declared all church members are eligible for ordered ministry, in effect, if God calls them. Well, you know, sure, Jim. Before that decision, can you, can't you see God calling you Hello there, Jim. I'm calling you to be a minister. I hope you're not gay. <laughs> hey, God. I'm good. I'm a heterosexual cis male. Oh, good. I know your church has some silly rules, and I wouldn't want to break your rules. Well, that's a good point. There were some personal discussions it was a tough time for many people, and some people left. But new people came in. Well, Kim, Bradley, and I came here in 2000, before St. Andrews was an affirming church. We came here because of Jane and her commitment to our community. We felt welcomed. You know, Jim, until I met people at this church, church people rarely talked to me. Well, that's what we're trying to model. In 1988, the General Council met and said that God's intention for all human relationships is to be faithful, responsible, loving, and sustaining of community and self. In other words, to be family. And then our council invited Gay Nipissing to use the club room for their meetings. Well, I remember 2013, we started the conversations for our formation. I remember the discussion groups in St. Andrews officially becoming an affirming congregation. Now we have Rainbow Pot Lux, where all 2S LGBTQ plus folks and allies are welcome. We celebrate Pi Day and Pride and have teachings about oppression and joy. Well, Jim, that's how it started, with an answer machine, a phone, and a little room at St. Andrews. Well, that's true. So, it's nice talking to you. And by the way, trainer, uh, you and I are offering tours of the room after, <laughs> after the service. Uh, yes, uh, tickets will be going on sale at the back of the church. I suggest you get yours early because they'll be going fast. Thank you very much, McWitch. And we will end with this. Um, I give thanks for the voices that make us community. Yes. Give thanks for the voices that call us into God's community. McGwitch. McGwitch. Good morning. 
My name is Robert Whitford, and I'm from Emmanuel United Church. It's my home congregation. We've been asked also to name the pronoun we use. Mine are he or him. God is here with us today in this place. As he was 97 years ago in Ferris with a group of faithful people who made the decision to build the Ferris United Church to serve the growing community. I want to take a quote from this little booklet. It's the 75th year anniversary of Emmanuel. The quote says, on the material side, the foul suppers, I thought that, foul suppers, and teas and bazaars became a legend in the community and area. In August 1950, the cornerstone of Emmanuel United Church on Tar Charles Street was placed, and in 1961, a new education wing was added to serve the growing need for Sunday school, adult study, and youth and scout groups. The Sociables was one of these groups, a little bit wild at times, and, and fun. One night, the guys were asked to go up front behind a curtain, pull up their pants above their knees. As the curtain was raised, the partners then were asked to identify the knobby knees. <laughs> Lots of fun. The congregation, through surveys of church and community, identified the need for a church on one level, flexible seating and easily accessible, as well as an attached 34 unit nonprofit housing complex. This was completed on Lakeshore Drive in 1986. I am pleased to say that as of the two years ago, the mortgages on both have been paid off. God is with us. Outreach in the community has been achieved in the past through hiring of a youth leader, development of a neighborhood center for youths and adults, a parish nurse, sponsoring and supporting calls to ministry as well as intern, food covered, the beef and turkey dinners stopped with the pandemic, as well as the community brunch. Zoom started with the pandemic in Bible study that still continues. We're proud to be a member of a church that advocates all are welcome and appreciates the wonderful pastoral care and leadership in word and music over the years. In closing, Let's remember, the church is not a steeple. The church is the people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. <clears throat> I give thanks for the voices that make us community. Good morning, my name is Bob McDougall and Oma Memorial United Church is my home congregation. We've also been asked to name the pronouns that we use, mine are he and him. Hymn 14 in More Voices is a short gathering piece of music entitled, Where Two or Three Are Gathered. It can be sung as a round or in unison and the words are simply, when two or three are gathered, I am there, I am there. It relates to a verse from the 18th chapter of Matthew's Gospel where Jesus says to his followers, when two or three of you are together because of me, you can be sure that I'll be there. I think that can offer a real sense of comfort to a smaller congregation like ours. We live in a world that screams bigger is better from our homes to our television screens to our bank accounts and just about everything else it seems that size really matters. But is big necessarily better? 
In a smaller church, there's the opportunity to get to know individuals and families pretty well and to encourage the sort of community that we've been invited to think and speak about today. Over the years, I've come to realize that for me, the key to being happy in a small church is to truly believe Jesus' words, when two or three are gathered, I am there. But what happens when even two or three can no longer get together? The recent COVID-19 pandemic really shone a light on that question, when even two or three of us were not permitted to gather with one another. With little or no notice or planning, we all became shut-ins. Worried about a loss of connection and fellowship, our minister offered to prepare a weekly lectionary-based theological reflection which was delivered to each of our members' homes in time for Sunday. Included was a scripture passage of focus, a pastoral prayer, and the Lord's Prayer. Many of us tried to engage with the worship resource during Omen's regular 9.30 to 10.30 worship time. After a trial period, members were contacted and asked if this outreach from the church was welcomed. The result was overwhelmingly positive. This took place during the lockdown. Even after we were permitted to return to in-person worship, many members were reluctant to do so, mostly out of continuing public health concerns. We kept a careful record of those attending on Sunday in the event of a need for contact tracing, and by doing, had an accurate list of those to whom we deliver a Sunday bulletin, a copy of the day's sermon and prayers, announcements for the week, and often a brief message from our minister. A committed, faithful group gathers after church and shares in the task of divvying up and delivering the weekly worship resource. A significant, though unexpected, outcome of this initiative has been that for quite a few members, this regular outreach from their church family is both meaningful and appreciated. They describe a feeling of genuine, deepened connection to our faith community. In the words of our creed, we are not alone, thanks be to God. Even when two or three are unable to gather, we still trust that God is there in our sharing as community. I give thanks for the voices that make us community. We give thanks for the voices that call us into God's community. Good morning. My name is Cindy Brownlee, and I call Trinity my home community. Uh, my pr pr pronouns are she, her. I have a storybook here. It's called The Invisible String. In the middle of COVID restrictions in the springtime of 2021, this children's story traveled from house to house to different addresses around the city, from apartment to house to Marina Point, traveling in a Ziploc bag. In living rooms and in kitchens, on porches, different adult members of the Trinity congregation recorded themselves reading just one page of the story. And then the next day, the book went to the next address, each recorded reading just one page, and passed to the next person who read just one page. Until the story was complete and digitally edited together, it took teamwork and coordination over many days to share a touching story. And on Easter Sunday in 2021, this became our gift to one another. We read the story about how we're all connected regardless of distance and isolation and fear. And if you wish to view this story, you can find it on our YouTube channel at Trinity North Bay. The COVID-19 pandemic cut us off. As we entered the early scary days of the pandemic of fear and isolation, we couldn't be together to share a meal with family, to celebrate a special occasion, to work or to worship together. But something changed. There was an unexpected voice from within that inspired so many of us. Like other communities, our church family found ways to remind one another that we are connected by an invisible string. Those days continue to cast a long shadow, so it feels important to remind ourselves with pride how we all reached out to one another in very unexpected and creative ways. At Trinity, we went from sitting in the pews one week to watching church on YouTube a short time later, often with contributions from neighboring church, sister churches like St. Andrews and Emmanuel. Our church choir trans into a virtual, transformed into a virtual choir, learning to sing and record individual parts from home and being mixed together to create a great library of hymns. 
Thank you. <laughs> Our children performed, dis performed a distance Christmas pageant on Zoom. Sunday school porch packages were opened at, and explored via Zoom gatherings. Our Sunday school children wrote letters to our seniors who wrote back. And Mossy Church, like Messy Church Outdoors, was born to allow families and children and children of all ages to safely gather outdoors in a natural setting. Our pastoral care committee and many others kicked into overdrive to maintain phone con contact with church members near and far. New and innovative ideas sprang from this desire to, to continue to be connected as a church community, a chance to stay connected to sustain that invisible string. But here's the unexpected part. Our acts of service and compassion and innovation didn't happen because one or two people took charge. It happened because dozens and dozens of people of all ages, all of us, realized that we could contribute to a church community in their own way. They felt the pull of the invisible string, the ties that together bind us to, as a family of faith. If you watch the reading of the invisible string, you'll see how the video segment led into another video we worked hard to put together. It was us reciting for one another a new creed of the United Church of Canada, reminding one another that while we can't see it in, see our, with our eyes, in our hearts we know ourselves to be connected by an invisible string. The Holy Spirit who reminds us time and time again, we are not alone. I give thanks for the voices that make us community.
We had references to the new creeds from our reflectors this morning, but we're going to invite you actually to share in other words to speak of our common faith from the Song of Faith. And so you're going to need some instructions. You're probably wondering why they're all color-coded. So this is what I would like. I'd like the center section plus folks in the balcony, along with me, we're going to read the red lines. And the folks that are seated on the side aisles and in the choir are going to read the black print, and we all read together the blue print. I'm going to invite you to stand as we make this affirmation of our common faith. So with me. We sing of a church seeking to continue the story of Jesus by embodying Christ's presence in the world. We are called together by Christ as a community of broken but hopeful believers, loving what he loved, living what he taught, striving to be faithful servants of God in our time and place. Our ancestors in faith bequeath to us experiences of their faithful living. Upon their lives, our lives are built. Our living of the gospel makes us part of this communion of saints, experiencing the fulfillment of God's reign, even as we actively anticipate a new heaven and a new earth. The Church has not always lived up to its vision. For we are called to be a blessing to the earth. We sing of God's good news lived out, a church with purpose. Faith nurtured and hearts comforted. Resistance to the forces that exploit and marginalize. Human dignity defended. Members of a community held and inspired by God, corrected and comforted, instrument of the loving spirit of Christ, creations mending, we sing of God's mission. And you might as well remain standing because as Ralph and John cue us up to sing, Who is my mother? I guarantee you, you want to want to dance or swing a little bit in your place. Good morning. Good morning. 
Uh, my name is Reverend Melody Duncanson Hales, and I, my pronouns are she, her. I'm joining you this morning on behalf of the Canadian Shield Regional Council, where I serve you, you, you in North Bay, and folks in Manitoulin, and Thunder Bay, and Nipigon, and Hornpain, and Hearst, and Kapuskasing, and, and about 84 other congregations across Northern Ontario. And it gives me great joy to be with you this morning. It, I, I realized it hasn't, it, it feels like a long time and then it feels like a short time and I see all my friends here and I'm so excited to see you all. It's wonderful to be worshiping with you today. Uh, I was invited to share with you an invitation for yourself. Uh, you'll notice in your bulletin that there is a lovely little insert that describes the Festival of Faith 2023 that's occurring June the 9th to the 11th right here in North Bay. Uh, the event is going to be housed at Canador College, but our worship will be just down the road at Trinity on the Sunday morning. And who is this for? Well, is it just for people who are elected members of Canadian Shield Regional Council? No, thank you, Will, it is not. It is for all of you. And there's some really exciting things that are going to be happening. So this is a way that we can share in community together, not just here in North Bay, to, but to connect with United Church folk from across Northern Ontario and Southern Ontario, because we went ahead and invited folks from Shining Water Regional Council to join with us as well. Why would you want to come to hang out with us June 9th to the 11th? Well, I have to tell you, here's a very special invitation. You will get to be part of a covenanting service on Sunday morning at Trinity for my good friend, Reverend James Coe, who we're welcoming from the Presbyterian Church in Canada. Yay, I'm so happy he's here. I'm so happy he's here, let me tell you why. Um, he's, he's here, it's because I've been supervising his congregation for two years, and now he gets to take it on himself. <laughs> um, a great reason why you need to be there is to, to, how many people play ukulele? Anybody here? Anybody here? Anybody here like to sing? <laughs> yeah, a, a little bit, maybe. Ralph says maybe. Well, if you come to the Festival of Faith, you will get to, to sing along with one of our premier uh, hymn, hymn, hymnists. I don't say how does that. Uh, our, 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 our wonderful composer, Linnea Good, and David Johnson, who will be joining us. Um, they're going to be doing some ukulele workshops, some ukulele church. I really hope that you come along for that. And she's also offering The Word Is Not Far From You, an introduction to By the Heart Biblical Storytelling. You can come and celebrate a birthday with us. Uh, whose birthday? the United Church of Canada's birthday, 98 years young, woohoo, right? Joining us as well will be Reverend Marlene Britton, and she is known to us throughout Northern Ontario where she used to serve in Thunder Bay. She presently serves the United Church of Canada as the executive minister in the Office of Vocations. So she's here to talk to us about calling, how we are called to live this wor God's world into, into being. So, so I hope you come to hear Marlene's inspiring message. Um, again, Trinity's just down the road for Sunday morning. It's not that far. It really isn't that far. What would be more wonderful than to come together when we don't have to talk about business? Well, there's going to be another meeting for other people to talk about business. We just get to be together. We get to sing together. We get to learn together. We get to eat together. Isn't this a wonderful moment for us to be together? Singing, music, Hopefully dancing, I'm hoping, maybe, maybe some people might be inspired to dance. Yeah, 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 there's wings and hymns and other Rock things. And Rock and roll, that's right, exactly. There's fantastic workshops. Now usually when you see me, I'm here to pitch the stewardship workshop, which is exciting, I'm sure, but you have so many other choices. You can go to Forest Church Workshop or a workshop on neurodiversity. There's all kinds of learning to happen, and you can find out all about this on the Canadian Shield Regional Council website. Amazing things that are happening right here, 
and they're at your fingertips, so you could, you could be there, any one of you. I'd love to see my friends all there. So I hope you'll join me on June 9th to the 11th, just down the road at Canada College, and then worshiping on June the 11th at Trinity United, right here in North Bay, to share in our festival of faith. And I'm supposed to say something at the end of this? I can't remember. There's no slide. I hope not. That's it. I got too much to say. You can talk to me after worship. Thank you. We do thank Melody for making the effort to be with us this morning. She drove in from um, Sudbury, but she'd been on the road all day yesterday doing things, and she's hitting the road again right after this in order to uh, continue to be part of her work for the Regional Council. You may have had the opportunity to share your offering through the boxes that were placed uh, at the back of the sanctuary, and as uh, Brittany brings those forward, I would invite us to uh, stand and sing together our offertory. The gifts of rich and the gift of your love and the gift of the Spirit by which we live. Good morning. My name is Brenda McClay, and my pronouns are she and her. And I'm here from Carmichael this morning, Carmichael United Church, and I want to put a plug in as well. Sydney and Shirley and I haven't talked about me doing this, but um, we are hosting the next fifth Sunday up in the little church behind the airport. And if any of you know about the size of Carmichael, this will be an outdoor event. So please, <laughs> fingers crossed, prayers for good weather. Um, it will be a bring your own lawn chair. We do have chairs, but you might find it more comfortable in a lawn chair. And we'll let you know some more planning details as we, as we go along. <clears throat> We're really excited about this too, by the way. <laughs> so please join in the, um, the prayers of the people. Holy One and Great Spirit of all we call home on this pale blue planet and beyond, we speak these prayers in community regarding the ordinary and the extraordinary affairs of each day, working together to give voice where needed, action where needed, and generosity to others as you have to all of us. We pray for those living without community, without basic supports, those feeling bewildered, destitute, or unwanted. See the lost and unloving, blessing each with what they need, as well as those caring for and supporting them. We pray for this planet, for all creatures and their needs, each as important as our own, for our sacred resources of water, air, and terrain. In this time of warming earth, budding plants, bird calls, and riotous river ways, we ask for your blessing of abundant life for all creatures, for wisdom and meaningful work to perpetuate this world that sustains us. We pray for leaders around the world those faced with difficult decisions, those engaged in conflict, those reticent to seek a humane justice, or blinded by destructive images of power. Bless all with wisdom, with hearts that yield to a Jesus-like love and foresight to create a better world for generations that will inherit it. We pray for the sick, the injured, those with worries and anxieties and their caregivers. Envelop them with your healing peace 
and hope for a better day to come. We pray for those not with us and those that grieve their absence. Keep them close and sheltered in your loving spirit. As believers, we pray to be a restorative church, a healing, patient presence in the midst of chaotic times, to be listeners, to be open and giving in ways to reflect your way of living. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name, asking that in your time and in your love, you will answer. And we continue to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the next hymn, number 145, from More Voices, Draw the Circle Wide. Oh. Oh, the PowerPoint has just taken a break, so please use your, <laughs> your hymnaries. <laughs> will find the response of commissioning printed in your bulletins. Listen to the voices that call to the deep places in our hearts. They whisper love song. Hear the sound of those who speak boldly of faithfulness, for they beckon us to follow the way of Christ. Heed the call of those who dare to work for justice. 
for they challenge us to draw the circles of community-wide. May the grace of the risen Christ draw us into communion with each other. May the friendship of the Holy Spirit inspire companionship with each other. May the love of our God teach us to love each other. Let us go in peace and grace to be faithful, transforming community. And the people of God say, Amen! Amen! to sing grace and then to make your way to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> 